Nathalie, and uh, I'm going to do this project. I've got this desk that uh, I've had for a long time. It's laminate. I could paint it maybe with chalk paint, but I think I'm going to use this Roommate's Peel and Stick um, removable or repositionable wallpaper. I've used it in a couple of other projects, and if you've uh, watched on my blog or seen on my blog, myhallcloset.com. You've seen that I did a kitchen backsplash and uh, a couple of other projects with that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if this is going to work. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is clear my workspace. So don't go away. I have a pair of scissors that I use only for paper. I don't use my good fabric scissors to do this. And I have a, a, a little razor knife that I'm going to use, and it's got a new snapped blade on it. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of wiggle room here. I'm just going to go to the edge, but I'm going to cut this about an inch longer or an inch and a half longer than what I actually need. And so what I've done is kind of like I used to do with wallpaper. I roll this kind of back on itself. And uh, so there's going to be about my, where I'm going to want to crease that. And what I'm going to do, let me slide this down a little bit. I could just measure it and take it to the cutting table and do that. But being that I want to, that I'm kind of a little bit lazy sometimes or think if I do it faster. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to give it a little fold right there and cut on that fold. Let me pull this over this way just a little bit. I'm going to cut three of these since I know that I've got the surface of the desk, the back part of the desk, and the very top of the desk, and those are all the, basically the same length. I know the, the surface of the desk and the top of the desk are the same. And uh, one of them is going to be just a little bit narrower. I may need to go back and cut four, but what I'm going to show you is uh, this. Let me put this little cup here just to kind of hold that for right now. Is like uh, this was my length. And so whenever I line this up, now you could actually put it on the cutting board that's gridded and everything. But when I line this up for maybe about 12 inches, this is the, the roll that I'm working with. Then whenever I, this is straight here and even. So then whenever I make a crease, that's going to be a good right angle to get, get that cut nice and straight. So because I've got it creased like that, I can go ahead and lift it back. I can see that crease is easier to cut than going sideways. It's easier to cut like this. And I, again, I've left myself a, about an inch to an inch and a half of what I call wiggle room that I'll trim off with a razor knife. All right, and then I'm going to cut this cut one more length. I'll probably have to go get another roll, but that's okay. It's still cheaper than buying a new desk. And I looked at several desks, and I never did find anything that I actually liked. So I have it cut to size, and uh, I want to kind of watch and make sure that I have, like, because like with wallpaper, there's a beginning edge and an ending edge. Uh, but I think I haven't decided about leaving these facing pieces in this wood, but uh, like whenever I put this over, I don't really like the way that that looks. So I think for right now, I'm gonna leave this the way it is. I may come back and paint it solid dark, but for right now, I'm just gonna do these surfaces here and here. And uh, so, uh, let me see which one, which edge I want to start with. I think I want to start with that corner over there. Make sure your surface is clean, and I'll deal with this cord here in a little bit. I could probably just go ahead and unplug it, but I think I can probably work around it without having to shut my printer down. All right, fold this back and get me a corner started. And the good thing about this is it is repositionable, so it's easy to... If you get it kind of sideways or something, you can lift it and then and then put it back down. So peel me off just a little bit of a space and maybe a little bit more than that. Put that underneath. Now make sure that I'm straight. Get that out of the way. 
and that I'm not too short on the other end. And I'm just going to touch down on this little piece of this corner. I'm straight down this lengthways. And so if you'll work it easy and slowly to get the bubbles out. So here I go with my cord that's under here. Again, being careful that I get my bubbles out, my air bubbles out. You can use a little sponge if you wanted to, or a squeegee. I'm going to work from the middle, pull this back some more. You can see I'm pulling this uh, protector paper off, or whatever you call that. And switch around just a little bit. Pull, and then I'm going from the middle and working out to work those any air bubbles out. And you can hear them. I don't know if you could hear that air bubble kind of crackling just a little bit. And if you don't go too, too fast with this, it's easy to work them out. on it. Another bubble right there. It's actually rolling on its own and I'm having less and less air bubbles. I think that's looking pretty good so far. All right, and we are to the end of that, uh, that stretch of paper. And so now what I want to do is get my razor knife and uh, trim that. Alright, so I use my razor knife to just lay it right against that edge to pull down to get this corner and then just press this into place. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim this out right in here. So I'm going to run my thumbnail or you could use like the back side of your blade or I just want to get that in place before I cut it. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to do this inside part. If I do, I'll do it in little sections. Just lay my blade right up against the edge of the desk. Give me just a little bit more length out here. There we go, and then I have a nice clean edge and a nice clean corner. I don't want to fight with putting this here and up here or trying to line up here. I'm going to line up. Now, remember I told you that there was like a, uh, a front side and a back side. 
So this has a little narrow border here and then a wider one here. So I want to put the narrow one up against this one. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this. I, I went ahead and got my tape measure. I'm going to take it over to the cutting table to cut this. And so right there, it's just a little over, just a tiny bit over, like a sixteenth over three inches. But I'm going to cut this at three and a half. So I've got just a little bit of wiggle room, again, wiggle room, and um, this dark border piece here is at three and a fourth. So if I cut it at three and a half, uh, then I can go here and then fold up a little bit, and then I'll have a little space whenever I go back down. So, and I'll just turn this around so then it'll be that narrow edge right over here. And also I'll show that in a second. But I'm gonna take this to my cutting table and I'm gonna cut this at three and a half. When I turn this over on its backside, double, like, you know, the thing, measure, measure twice and cut once. Made sure that it was with this little small, uh, where it has this little indentation. It's not an indentation. It's a faux wood grain where it would come together. This one's wider. This one's smaller. I needed the one with the smaller space here. So I've marked it at three and a half on the backside with my pen and then used a long ruler to long, well, I've got a, that long clear thing that I use to cut with sometimes. Anyway, or to, to measure with or to mark with. Uh, okay, so by cutting this just a little bit wider and then this is where that little piece is that I was talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the backing off and I'm gonna come right in and lay that so it'll go up the back of the wall just a tiny bit, but I want to butt it right up against, I don't really want to overlap it. I want to butt it right up against that groove right there, that piece right there, okay? Okay, so this really is like matching wallpaper. So there is a little pattern that's going on here. Uh, let me show you, this is where I cut this at the three and a half. And the pattern is actually, I can see the repeat, there's a light spot right there. Well, here's a light spot right here. And let's see if those two match. So that's where that would need to match up, and that's where that one would need to match up. So what I'll do is I'll put, I'll come off of that other end and work this side down here. But I really do want these to match up right here. And uh, I don't know that the back side is going to matter so much, but these two little light spots back here. And these probably won't either because they'll probably be covered up in reality. So I probably could get by with it, but I'm not going to because I want to show you the right way to do it. So you might need to just kind of rethink that a little bit before you start cutting on your paper is matching that pattern. tear off this extra, get it out of my way so I don't have to deal with that. And so I have my two light spots kind of lined up here. And that's, this is beautiful because it's repositionable. I love that. All right, and get my gaps closed up. Get my air bubbles out. This is a lot easier since I'm not working with such a large piece. cool this is just like the entire length of the roll and it's just the right size for underneath here so that is going to I'm not gonna to have to cut anything it'll bring it right down to that edge I am pretty excited about that